All right, let's quickly talk The Voice because the polls keep on showing one thing and the uh, sentiments out of Gama and Indigenous leaders in the, the Yes camp say something completely different. Where are you on this at the moment? Are you um, seeing this as a great victory for yourself? Well, I think this is a deeply personal decision for the Australian people to make and the Prime Minister hasn't brought the Australian people into his trust. He refuses to table the legislation that would demonstrate the mechanics of the, of the voice before uh, before the referendum. He's simply saying that he will do that after. Now, if he wants the Australian people to understand the voice and what it means and how it will operate, then why wouldn't he table that legislation? So not just politicians could see, but the Australian sure. people could see. He failed to have a constitutional recognition, a uh, con convention to bring the Australian people, not just one cohort of our population to design our constitutional amendment. Uh, and he hasn't been clear about the pathway of what the Uluru Statement of the Heart is. It's not mm. just voice, it's truth and treaty. Now, the Prime Minister hasn't been able to demonstrate that and we're, we're simply... Well, he did say at the weekend, the, the if I can that, quickly just interject there, he did say at the weekend he doesn't see a role for the Commonwealth Government to, to look at treaties. No, you know, the comparisons to New Zealand and the Treaty of Waitangi are just not there. Treaties are being negotiated, you know, every day with different tribes and different states and local areas. Yeah, but he also went on to say that he, he felt that, that would they would still be going towards one at a Makarata, through the Makarata, and it would be uh, in agreement in agreement, it's not could not be forced upon us. So this is where the mixed language from the Prime Minister is confusing Australians and creating uncertainty and anxiety. Uh, and when he he dodged the question last week around this, and then now is trying to to get to some position on it, it's created mm. a lot of confusion. This is an opportunity for the Prime Minister to lead. We've said from the start, if this was about constitutional recognition, then we would support and, and help the Prime Minister with due process to go through a constitutional convention to design the, the appropriate the appropriate amendment to to whether it be the preamble or the constitution itself yeah. in getting that right and drawing on the broader community rather than just one cohort. And if that was what he wanted to do, then, then he'd have support. And I think this is an opportunity for him to lead, to show some courage, to realise the proposition he's putting in front of the Australian people mm. isn't one that can be accepted because we're creating another layer of bureaucracy. We, we're, this isn't anything new, The Voice. This is the the other the the other furphy that he's throwing around here. That this voice is different to what we've done in the past to close the gap. It's not. We've done Why this not? before. It was called ATSIC. No, it, it, it's because it ATSIC failed. ATSIC wasn't and, quite and, like this. And, and it failed. It. Yeah, but this it is failed. Local no, voices. it was a representative body. Yeah, sure, but no, this is again. No, 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 no. Sorry, Laura. It's not a. No, it's not a local voice. I'm sorry. If you live in an electorate like mine, where you represent 10% mm. of the Australian landmass. I'll have a representative that won't be just my electorate. It'll be, I'm 43% of Queensland. It'll mm. probably be three or four other electorates. And the challenges in for my Indigenous communities and opportunities in Warwick is different to that in Kunnamulla that is different yeah. to that in, in Cannonball. So, that's I, not I mean, that's a regional voice. That's not a local voice. Yet. And and the and the yes proponents are talking about and to my know, point, this being from Arakoon or the Kimberley and bringing those local people together. I mean, not Pearson's but, not but Laura, be the this body. Is, how is that not local? But this is the insanity of it. This is this is where there needs to be another in, intervention, a 2023 intervention. We know to the postcode are where the gap hasn't been closed in what area. Mm. Uh, we don't need to have regional bodies. We need to empower local elders in local communities. Well, that's even worse, don't you think? Because you've the got programs. the information, but you haven't been able to but this make is, change there. But this is the mistake that we're making in the past. You, you're going to have a representative covering, you know, more than 10% of the Australian landmass, hundreds of different diverse communities. They come back to Canberra, which is what they did last time with ATSI. And what they do is they give the information to the bureaucrats okay. and the bureaucrats then generalise and nationalise programs. That's not how you fix this because challenges in one community is different to the other. Mm. The intervention needs to happen with the bureaucracy and getting them out of Canberra and empowering them with local elders in local communities, having someone for us that represent rural and remote areas, vastly different communities, vastly different challenges. This is why we say to people living in capital cities that haven't been out to our parts of the world. Mm. The nationals have lived experience. We live with the consequences of a representative body before. It failed us before. There is an opportunity to fix that, but that should be separate to constitutional recognition. And that would be a unifying moment for our nation. Unfortunately, the Prime Minister's lost it. David Littleproud, it's always good to talk to you and we always got over time, so we'll see you next week.